YouTube, this is Decker again with everything you need to know and today we're going to be discussing workflows and color grading. So to get you started, what you want to do, open GoPro Cineform Studio, free software you can get from GoPro.com. We're going to be importing a file. Um, if you don't have this window or that option doesn't come up, you can just go into import new files and select the file you're going to be working with. So there we go. First thing I like to do, um, I'll go into advanced settings, set my quality to high, and I'll drop my frame rate down to 23.98. And remember for future settings, just in case I have some more clips I'm working with. Um, but the reason we're dropping our frame rate down to 23.98, down from 1080p uh, at 60 frames per second, it's actually going to give us a slow motion effect when we bring it into Final Cut Pro without dropping any frames. And then you'll just be able to blade it and speed up your clips. Um, back to regular speed and I'll show you guys that in just a minute. So quality high, frame rate 23.98 looks good. Change the name, change, just add Cineform onto there. You can change your directory. Um, I just save everything to my desktop just so I can find it really quick. If you recorded your footage upside down, rotate, flip, always good stuff to use. This is just a quick little video of my brother throwing a 360 at the skate park today um, so we're going to be working with this so make sure our settings are right and there we go add clip to conversion and we will begin to convert so just to give you guys a quick idea of what I'm filming this with it was with the GoPro Hero 3 Black I shot it in 1080p at 60 frames per second with Protune on and my white balance set to Cam Raw because that's the way you're going to get the most out of your image sensor so we'll be back in a second when this is done converting. And we're back with our clip just about to be converted and there it is. So what we're going to do now is what we're going to do now is proceed to step 2. We're going to go over select our clip. Um, if you're shooting in Protune, you're going to have really bad kind of as you can see the picture looks pretty washed out. Avoid going in and clicking the Protune setting right off the bat cuz you're going to lose a lot of detail in your blacks um I mean your shadows, everything is going to be kind of washed out. If you don't really want to get into color grading, it's not too bad of a thing to use. You can, you know, just select it, run with it, and export it. But what I like to do is I'll set mine to none. I'll actually come in here. Uh, let's see. We're not going to be working with 3D framing controls. Not going to be working with that. That just zooms in on your picture, um, winds it, squishes it, whichever way you want to do it. So we'll come right into here. We'll go to let's see bring it to a part I want to edit there we go I'm using this clip here because the black of his pants are pretty washed out as you can see um, and I just want to make sure I keep the blackness detail there so we're gonna bring our sharpness up I usually bring mine up to just a tad over the first bar you can kind of see a little bit of the difference that we're looking at um, you don't want to go too overboard with sharpness you'll end up looking pretty grainy um, saturation Bring that up. Uh, it's starting to look a little orange. Bring our contrast down. Exposure. Let's see. Where's the right spot? And that looks pretty good. And this is really just something you're gonna have to play around with. Um, I don't even have the way I like to have all my colors dialed in yet. It's honestly just something that you gotta mess around with for a little bit. But I'll run with it like that for now. This is just kind of quick and dirty, just to give you guys an idea of the difference it's made. Drag that over. As you can see, this is before any color editing. This would be after. So you get a little bit better, I mean, better colors, and you can definitely edit it more. Um, like I said, this is just a quick color edit that we're going into. I usually take a lot more time with it, but that's about it. Um, temperature, this will change your hue essentially of it. Blue, green, all that good stuff. Sometimes we'll bring in footage, it'll look a little blue. Um, just drag it over to the right, that'll bring it back to where it needs to be. And that looks about right, back where it was. So let's go to File, Export MOV, Matt, 360, Cineform, changed. 
Save it back to our desktop. That's going to export, and we will be back once this is finished. All right, and it looks like we're back. Video is all conformed and converted. So now what I'm going to do is just quit out of GoPro, uh, Cineform Studio. Uh, sure, why not? Save the settings. No, no, get out of here. I don't need to save that. Don't save. We have our file already. Next thing I'm going to do, go into Final Cut Pro. First thing you want to do is we are going to go to New Event. I'm just going to label this as Workflow. We're going to go into New Project. Call it Workflow as well. Um, what you want to make sure is your custom settings are at 1080p, um, 1920 by 1080, and your frame rate matches what you brought your frame rate down to in Cineform. So 23.98, gonna leave that as that. Audio channels, stereo, 40K, 48 kilohertz, um, Apple ProRes 422 is gonna be your best settings. So all that looks good. Import file. And we will go to Mat360 changed. Workflow, yes, copy files, create optimized media, minimize for balance color. Alright, so everything looks good there. Going to import that file. As you can see, as this starts to spin, if this is, you know, maybe your first time using Final Cut Pro or kind of new to it, that's essentially rendering the footage as it's coming in which is an awesome feature with Final Cut Pro 10. So right off the bat, I'm not going to switch any in or out points. Um, I'm just going to click and drag this, drop it right down here. And there we go. So if I play it back, you can see it's been slowed down, 23.98. You get that slow-mo effect. Um, what I'm going to do right off the bat, I'm going to hit B, switch to my blade tool. If you don't want to use that, you can just go into here, switch to blade. Um, I'm going to leave it, let's see where do I want to cut it. I'm going to cut it right there, I'll switch and then he's going to throw it, I'll let him roll away, as he drops down I'll cut it again. Alright, so what I just did cut it up into three fragments, I'll go into here, we're going to go over, so this is to get it back to your standard um, speed at 59.98 frames per second. Drop to 5.2 and you won't be able to see your percentage here so you're gonna come down open up your files a little bit this just shows more of a timeline. Come back over and to get it back to your original frame rate you're gonna want to bring it down to 250. There we go, 250. Come over to this one, do the exact same thing. Fast two times down to 250 perfect alright we can bring this back get it all nice and tight uh, are you kidding me switch to 249 I don't know this might not bug some people but it really annoys me it switches back and forth I gotta drag it out a little more I think sometimes if you're having that problem that's your best bet you can Get it a little more customized. There we go. 250. Stay at 250. Drag this back down. All right. One thing I like to do is I'll usually go in a um, little magic wand. I'll do balance color. And then after balancing color, I'll usually go in. A lot of people like to select. Um, where are we? In this little viewer here, video quality, optical flow. It's going to take a little longer to render, but it's going to help with your movement. Um, look a little smoother from transitioning f between your 250 back down to 23.98, then back up to 250. So this is going to take a second to render. Um, you can open up, click the little tab here, you'll see what you got going on. Transcoding analysis. Drop that down. Optical workflow analysis takes a little bit longer. I mean, test it out, use it, don't use it, whatever you want to do. You're going to end up spending a little more time rendering your video when you use it, but I think it'll give it a little bit better of a look. So we will be back when this is done rendering.
All right, guys, so our render is just about finished. Um, just a quick tip, if you have any orange over, as you can barely see it here as we finish, if there's any orange over any of your footage, you make sure you do not um, export your footage yet and find out what needs to be rendered because you really don't want to export anything if it hasn't been fully rendered. You'll end up losing uh, a lot of video quality. So everything's dialed in. Go over it really quick. Nice normal speed. Slow it down. And speed back up. Alright, so we're almost back. After my optical flow, I went back and uh, selected all. Went back and applied, let's see, my balance color again because for some reason it didn't stick the first time. So everything's all rendered. We're all set to go. We're going to go to Share, Export Movie, going to Current Settings. Um, mine's already set as Apple ProRes, so I'm not going to switch it. Uh, I'm not going to open it with anything. Include video and audio. Um, sometimes maybe you want to include video only. I don't know. Up to you. So we'll hit next, and it'll begin exporting after we save it. Final Cut Pro X. Workflow, save it to desktop. All looks good. It's so going to write our video really quick. All right. So I'm going to quit Final Cut Pro. And if you have Final Cut Pro X, Final Cut Pro 10, you don't really have to worry about saving anything. It automatically saves um, constantly, pretty much. So at least I've never had to. Next, we are going to open Compressor. All right, guys, so we just opened Compressor. Usually there's a window here with a bunch of presets, um, but that's not something you really want to deal with. So to start, you want to click and drag. We'll find your clip, then click and drag it over. Just drop it right into the box. And what you want to do is we'll go to Apple, Formats, come down to QuickTime, and you're looking for H.264. That's QuickTime H.264. And you're just going to click and drag, bring that on up, drop it in. So now we have it selected here. Before you start your export, make sure you go into the second settings window. Um, open up settings, make sure you have your quality set at best, H.264. Uh, leave it at that. Best. Keyframes, every 24 frames. Uh, current frame recording. All right. Oh, that looks good. And then if you want to bring it down to 720, you can go into here, drop it down. Um, I don't know, easier export, stuff like that. I'm going to leave mine at 1080. So I'm then going to switch over to destination. So this is to make sure where it gets saved to. Um, and just click and drag, like I said, I save everything to desktop. So drag that on there. And we'll rename it one more time. Compressed Workflow. And submit. You don't really need to worry about this. We'll submit. But And that will begin your process here. And it should take not too long, depending on um, how long your video is. But we'll be back in a sec. Alright guys, so we're all compressed, all ready to go, just to show you really quickly. Um, not something you need to worry about, you don't need to save it, you can just quit out of the whole program. So, now that you're all done, the video is uh, whatever you want to do with it. Upload it to Vimeo, YouTube, um, spread around the internet, post it up, and let me know how you guys like this workflow. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, tons of more GoPro videos coming out, and once again, thanks for watching.